This episode is brought to you by Progressive, a leader in boat insurance. Welcome aboard to Carefree Boating. Here, we don't worry about the what-ifs, because we explore with Progressive Boat Insurance for as little as $100 per year for a basic liability policy. Progressive also offers a variety of other coverages and can help you cover repair costs when you need it. And with discounts like multi-policy, safety courses, responsible driver, and more, your mind can really flow free. Cruise on over to Progressive.com to get a quote today and see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Rate and discounts not available in all states or situations. Today on CityCast Boise, record high temperatures have really tested Treasure Valley Gardens recently. It's been so bad that the U.S. Department of Agriculture is recommending changes to what we plant and when. Master gardener Gretchen Anderson is here to tell us what these changes mean for your green thumb. Plus, she has fresh tips on what you should be planting right now. It's Thursday, April 4th. I'm Lindsay Van Allen, and this is what Boise's talking about. Gretchen, thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait to delve into your gardening expertise. Oh, always a pleasure. It's so good to talk with you. So this year, Boise set several record high temperatures for the month of January. We were seeing temperatures in the 60s. And around that same time, the USDA released their plant hardiness zone map. And while there are some pretty significant changes for the entire country, there were also some interesting changes for Boise, too. Um, but before we dig into that too deeply, can you explain what a plant hardiness zone map is and why it exists? Well, a plant hardiness zone map will let you know if you can actually grow a certain item, a certain uh, plant in your backyard, essentially. Mm. So many of us have picked up seed packets on occasion and you turn it to the back side and it says either for this zone or that zone, or it actually even has a graph on it. And it will tell you if that if that particular seed will do well in our zone. And we have a pretty good growing season here. Our last freeze is generally sometime around uh, May 10th. Mm. So we're coming up on that in about, uh, you know, five five weeks. And our first freeze is usually, usually around October 10th. Okay. And so what is this plant hardiness? Is that just the ability to withstand the freezes in that zone or... Exactly. So, Lindsay, if if you take, for instance, my daughter who lives in Florida, her plant hardiness zone is going to be really low, like a, a one or a two. We, on the other hand, here in, in Idaho, uh, at least in the Treasure Valley, are anywhere from a 6A to a 7B. Mm. And when it changed, when the USDA announced the change last November, um, and then it it got out to the masses in January, um, it changed just by one little bit. It's not it's not a huge change, although I will tell you I'll tell you this little story. When I was studying to be a master gardener uh, back in 2012, 2011, 2012. We had a class where they announced that the USDA had changed our zone. And I thought, how can that be? They can't change the zone. (laughs) But yes, if there are warming temperatures or some kind of climate adjustment, those zones need to be changed. Okay. Okay. And so I I have a two-part question for you. Why is this map important for gardeners? And then why also might this map be important for people who don't necessarily consider themselves gardeners? Well, the map itself is important because I I had a friend tell me she doesn't plant anything that that won't withstand a, a five uh, instead of a six or a seven. She's she's down doing the fives, and I thought, wow, that's brave. Um, but it really is a great guideline for gardeners. You're not going to take a plant that would normally be in a very low um, 
uh, hardiness zone, say like a lemon tree or, a, um, you know, something of that or a lime tree, any kind of citrus, uh-huh. you're not going to plant that here because it just won't survive. It won't survive our winters. And that's what they're talking about. If you're doing, if you're going to transplant something in terms of seeds, though, you got to be, you have to pay great attention to that because it really is all about the length of the growing season that you mm-hmm. in your particular spot have. So what zone is most of Boise in or most of the Treasure Valley in? I would say it's now more in the sixes than it is in the sevens. And that's just because we've had warmer temperatures here. Um, And it's changed just by a, a slight bit. But, you know, Lindsay, if we start getting, you know, if these changes keep coming around, then the, then we raise a flag on that, right? Yeah, yeah. And the USDA was reluctant to give reasons as to why these shifts have happened. But why do you think we've shifted zones? Well, I I think I was a naysayer to begin with. But I think that if you really look at uh, what's going on, our winters are warmer and our summers are a heck of a lot hotter. So I, as a master gardener, will say, I think it's because of that. We have a, we have climate change. Can you give me any examples of things that maybe we would have had a harder time growing 10 years ago when we were a different zone, but would be a little easier now or potentially more successful now? Specifically, I would say, Lindsay, that it is um, the the length of time to maturity when you put a plant in the ground. Like I'm going out to, to get uh, sun sugar tomatoes to plant and they take anywhere from 60 to 65 days to mature. Now, I think we are safe to, you know, look at those tomatoes that take up even longer than that. Um, so that's what changes is your length of m- maturity. So mm. how long it takes your peppers to mature, how long it takes your, your winter squash to mature, et cetera, et cetera. This episode is brought to you by Progressive, a leader in boat insurance. Welcome aboard to Carefree Boating. Here, we don't worry about the what-ifs, because we explore with Progressive Boat Insurance for as little as $100 per year for a basic liability policy. Progressive also offers a variety of other coverages and can help you cover repair costs when you need it. And with discounts like multi-policy, safety courses, responsible driver, and more, your mind can really flow free. Cruise on over to Progressive.com to get a quote today and see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Rate and discounts not available in all states or situations. It's only a kick, a jump, a block, it's only a serve, it's only a tackle, a run, it's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. And the increased heat isn't the only factor in this shift or in the climate change that we're seeing. We're seeing more heat waves, more drought concerns, changes in our precipitation. And how will these other factors play a role in affecting how people are gardening? I talked with a fellow this past weekend who said he had he grew he grew all sorts of tomatoes last year, never had any fruit. And I said, well, maybe it was a timing issue. You got them in and they matured right at the the height of our season when it got so hot. And, you know, so many people grow tomatoes and squash and and peppers in this valley and onions. We're we're famous for growing onions and garlic and and that sort of thing. So um, it is a concern. You want to make sure that uh, your timing is right. And sometimes... Gardeners even have to shade their plants so the plants get a respite from the direct sun when we're up over 100 degrees. No, I'm so glad we're talking because I'm I'm not a big gardener. I'm nowhere near a master gardener, um, but I do like having like a little bruschetta garden. Yes. Uh-huh. And so I've always done like tomatoes and basil and some other herbs and About the past two years, I cannot get my tomatoes to do anything like they I have had the worst luck with tomatoes. And I thought I'm just getting worse at this, I guess. But yeah, no, maybe it's just with all this climate change, I'm going to have to change my approach to that. Well, I think that it 
it's all an experiment. I, I taught a class last Saturday and I said, first and foremost, gardening is an experiment. Sometimes it works for you and sometimes it doesn't. And um, you, wanna, you want to plant what you eat, like the bruschetta. So keep trying, Lindsay. And I, I don't have a problem with uh, putting in the ground a larger tomato plant rather than the pony packs, mm -hmm. because that gives me a head start for sure. That is, I will keep that in mind. I will keep that in mind. Are there any plants that you've changed how you garden them or how you take care of them because of these shifts in our climate? Oh, absolutely. Uh, herbs are a really good example. Okay. When I'm planting my cilantro and uh, my basil and uh, any other kind of herb, I usually plant them, Lindsay, in, in movable containers oh, because okay. they need the sunshine first and foremost. But then when we get hot, uh, I, I want to move them to the shade so that I have a longer lifespan of that particular herb because if they spend too much time in the sun and the heat, what happens is they go to seed or, or they bolt. That's what we call it. Yeah. So that's my best advice for herbs. Okay, I got to keep that in mind for my little herb garden. Have you been noticing any changes in gardening trends in the Treasure Valley? Um, I, you know, I think it's just a tried and true area to grow uh, certain certain uh, edibles, and that's what I specialize in. So, you know, in the Treasure Valley, we're not going to have a whole lot of luck growing blueberries. We just our, our soil is just not acidic enough. Hmm. The pH isn't there for the blueberries. But I'll tell you, we can grow a mean potato and some fabulous onions and to, <laughs> and and potatoes, tomatoes, onions, uh, peppers, all of that. And what I have noticed actually since 2020 is that there are so many more people gardening. And I think that is fabulous because right now, Lindsay, our food mile, our overall food mile is 1,500 miles from farm to fork. And so when you can go out back and you can grab your tomato and your basil and make a little bruschetta, you are significantly reducing your own personal food mile. And I think that's a wonderful thing and it benefits all of us. That is fantastic. I'm glad so many more people are taking that approach and trying that. And it kind of inspires me to want to try that more. Uh, and are there any changes making it easier or more difficult to garden in this area? I don't I don't think so. I, I believe that, uh, you know, there are a lot of um, myths out there. I don't know if you've ever heard the one Lindsay, that you shouldn't plant your tomatoes or any of your vegetables until the snow leaves Schaefer Butte. No, you I just hadn't heard up. that one. Oh, yeah. That's been around forever. That uh, if you still see snow on Schaefer Butte, it's too early to plant anything. Well, if you think back in 2016, 2017, when we had what people call snowmageddon, um, we wouldn't have planted anything until July, late July, because there was snow up there until then. So really, you got you got to look at those first and last frost dates. So the first frost date you you have until October tenth usually in your in our growing season. The first the last frost date, like I said, is around Mother's Day, so May tenth, and um, I'm actually going to put tomatoes in the ground. Uh, this week with what we call a cloche. So it's um, it's just a hat for the tomatoes. But what that does, it, it will create its own little greenhouse until May 10th, and then I'll, I'll remove them after May 10th because I don't want to have all my work go to waste. I'm going to protect them for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're not looking to the butte. We're watching the frost dates. Yes, yes. Perfect. <laughs> so it's starting to feel more like spring. And I wanted to know, Gretchen, what's in your garden? What are you most looking forward to planting? Ooh, I am looking forward to planting some different types of tomatoes this year. And I'm, I'm a big tomato grower and harvester and preserver. We use, we use tomatoes all winter long. And uh, haven't bought a tomato in a grocery store in a market for I can't tell you how many years. Um, but what, what I want to do is seek out three new varieties that I, I'm really excited about. One is called a Kedlingburger. Oh. And 
Yeah, Lindsay, for our friends who live up in like um, Idaho City, because they have a shorter growing season, um, the Kedling Burger is the fastest to mature. And it's 40 days to maturity. Oh, that's really fast. You know, yeah, most tomatoes are like uh, 65, 70 days, right? So this is 40 days, a Kedling Burger. The other one is called a Black Crim or a Black Beauty. The cool thing about this tomato, we, we've heard of Cherokee purple and they get really purple, almost black, but you want, but the black creme and the black beauty get black, almost like a blueberry or there is a dark, dark purple or a blackberry. Um, and they have the same antioxidant properties in its skin as those berries do. Mm. So I want to grow one of those. And then last but not least, um, and these these tomatoes have been around for a minute. Um, I've heard about the super sauce tomatoes that are it's a it's a Roma type of Roma tomato, and it can get to two pounds. It's Whoa. huge. Yeah, yeah, it's bigger than your hand. Yeah, it can grow to two pounds. So I'm thinking, I just need one of those plants. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fine. You have all kinds of sauce. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited about that. And then, of course, peppers. I'm putting in peppers. And I always grow winter squash because we just we use it all all winter long. I'm, I still have some squash from last year that will um, we will roast up uh, this this week, as a matter of fact. What are your spring tips? What should people be planting right now or should they be planting right now? Um, it You can plant right now. You just have to be prepared to protect those plants if the weather calls for some type of a freeze. It's rare that we don't know about a freeze, so you want to make certain that you're around to protect your plants. Uh, so with that, I would say you could put just about anything in the ground right now. Most people right now are putting in lettuces, and uh, there's also the brachius, um, like uh, um, broccoli, that sort of thing, and, and cabbage can go in, kale can go in, though, and peas went in hmm, almost a month ago. You could plant peas. Oh wow! They're, they love the cold weather. They don't. They don't fare well with the hot weather, but they do love the cold weather. So if you want to plant some snap peas, get on it right now and put them in the ground. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'm going to run out right now because I do love some snap peas. So yeah. I don't want to be late for that. <laughs> Do you have any tips for people who are new to gardening or who may have recently relocated to this area and aren't as familiar with our climate? So anyone who is new to gardening uh, and uh, or is has relocated, make sure you understand the zones. OK, the hardiness, the plant hardiness zones are going to be your friend. So I would highly recommend that you jump on the USDA site and see what what your area is. Um, mine went from a uh, 7B to a 6A. So now I know I'm in, I'm solidly in the sixes. So um, I would say check that out and then don't try to grow blueberries. <laughs> I know, you know, you can, Lindsay, you can try, <laughs> but you're going to have to one, acidify the water that you pour onto those blueberries and acidify the soil to get anything. I think for sure. I think I'll just keep buying them at the store then. Nice. And trying other plants. Thank you so much, Gretchen. I appreciate all of your expertise and tips. Oh, always a pleasure talking with you. And I look forward to uh, talking to you down the line in terms of what we're harvesting. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, leave us a review. It helps people find us. We'll be back tomorrow morning with our Friday News Roundup. See you then.